beautiful, healthy Eastbourne, the sun trap of the south, waits to welcome you to the holiday of a lifetime. Eastbourne, with its fine beaches and flower-decked promenades, offers every kind of holiday attraction. So settle in your seats while we look at just a few of the delights waiting for you here on the coast of Sussex. And where better to start than on the beach than any seaside holiday? Maybe the nearest you ever get to bathing is thinking about it, but even so, it's nice to know it'll be try. The beach here at Eastbourne is safe and clean, and for the youngsters, these floats are an endless source of fun in the sun. But what's a beach without sandcastles? These young ladies can't even wait for the sand to dry. Mum and Dad don't mind, after all, what's a beach without deck chairs? Hello? Oh well, maybe we shouldn't have asked. Must be the sea air or something. Still, all the world loves a lover. And even cricket lovers. And this must be what the Calypso singers meant by cricket, lovely cricket. Not up to Lord's standard, maybe, but certainly just as attractive. Whoops, let's try again. That's the way to do it. And this is the way to enjoy Eastbourne. Whether you come early in the spring, right in the season, or later on in September, you'll find hospitality is a byword in Sussex, and never more than here at Eastbourne. There's accommodation to suit every taste and every purse from the five-star hotels to the coziest guest and boarding houses. The caravan fans are well cared for too. And everywhere you go, Eastbourne welcomes you with flowers. But the carpet gardens on the Grand Parade a magnificent centerpiece. Here, with the sunlit fountains sparkling in the sunshine, you just can't help pausing to admire the glowing colour, the delicate beauty of the flowers. Flowers of all kinds, carefully nursed to perfection by a team of expert gardeners, who often use literally hundreds of plants in just one small flower bed like this. But whether you're a gardener or not, when you stroll along Eastbourne's carpet gardens, you will agree they can be breathtakingly beautiful. So let's catch our breath at the bandstand. Looks like our young lovers are doing the same. And it's not surprising because sooner or later, everyone comes to listen to the band. And what famous bands you can listen to in this superb setting right on the seafront, which provides seating for 3,500, as well as the finest music and musicians. But Eastbourne's a family resort. And there are special children's shows every weekday at the Redoubt Open Air Theatre, again, right on the seafront. Here, Uncle Bertie reigns supreme, and a feature of his shows is the part the audience plays, with talent contests, fancy dress competitions, and an endless supply of prizes and presents. No wonder Uncle Bertie is a big hit with the small fry. It's a wonderful show, all right. There's something about a holiday that brings out the oarsmen in people. And in Eastbourne's Princess Park, they come in all shapes and sizes. These two are really going places. That's better. Shows what Dad can do. These young ladies must have told Dad not to bother. Or perhaps he just prefers to be ashore. And that's just where we're going ourselves. To Devonshire Park and the more energetic game of tennis. Here at Devonshire Park, Eastbourne presents many exciting tournaments and championships, both amateur and professional. And with 23 grass courts available, the visitor to Eastbourne can play lawn tennis at its very best, in the sunshine, on well-trimmed grass. And what more can a tennis player ask for? Golfers might say, well, what about us? And they'll find miles of rolling fairways and a choice of three first-class 18-hole courses. 
You might miss that birdie, but you'll always be glad you didn't miss playing on Eastbourne's downland courses, where the air is as exhilarating as a well-hit iron shot. Well, well, it looks like the anglers are keeping pretty busy on the jetty. But whatever they catch, no doubt they'll still tell us all about the one that got away. Yes, they still get away, even at Eastbourne. Bowlers are almost spoilt for choice, with Cumberland greens in no less than five different settings. Mm, that seems to have upset things. So while they sort it out, how about a boat trip to Beachy Head? It's almost impossible to think of Eastbourne without a trip to Beachy Head, a massive headland at the western end of the town. Looks like you-know-who agrees with us too. But then, who would miss a trip to Beachy Head? We're nearing the lighthouse now, and what tales it could tell nestling beneath the towering cliffs of Beachy Head. And what cliffs they are. For here, the rolling Sussex countryside plunges 600 feet into the sea. Down, 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 down. To where the lighthouse stands vigil strong as the sea itself. Small, insignificant almost beneath the cliffs, the light stands 140 feet above the waves, flashing into life at night, piercing the darkness every 20 seconds with a beam that is visible 16 miles away out in the channel. Having rounded the lighthouse, it's back to beautiful Eastbourne, and it looks like there's a welcoming committee off the port bow. Nearly there now, and what a wonderful trip it is. Sailing along in the sunshine, with the whole journey taking no more than an hour. But it's time we looked at some of the old world inns, abbeys and castles right here in Eastbourne. And what better place to start than the Rose and Crown? That's the thing after a sea trip. A pint of beer and some good English roast beef with cheese and biscuits to follow. Hey, what's all this? Looks like we're in the model village, right next to the aquarium and Uncle Bertie's show at the Redoubt. So much for our roast beef. But a visit to Eastbourne's model village is a fine alternative. After all, we can have roast beef any time. Here in the Redoubt, you'll find some of the finest architectural models in the country. A miniature Sussex village, Fountains Abbey, the stately home, and a host of other fascinating models. This world in miniature nestles inside the walls of the Redoubt, an old Napoleonic fort overlooking the English Channel. Gulliver must have felt something like this when he woke up in Lilliput. But me, I feel like a cup of coffee. So let's go along the seafront to Hollywell. Well, well, look who's here. Well, they're going to need some refreshment chasing about like this, and Hollywell is just the place for it. Because here, at the Hollywell Chalet, you can enjoy your snack in a pleasant, sheltered spot by the sea with an atmosphere that's almost continental. And with bowling and putting close by in the Helen Garden, a visit to Hollywell is everybody's cup of tea. The lovebirds obviously think so, and who can blame them? Because just a stone's throw away is the Italian Garden tucked away in a secluded hollow. Or perhaps you'd rather take things easy in the new sun lounge and cafe by the wish tower on the Grand Parade. You could almost imagine you're on the promenade deck of an ocean liner as you relax here in the sun. Just by the sun lounge, the western lawns stretch invitingly towards Beachy Head. Looking the other way, the sea, the pier, and all the gaiety of the beach, and a wonderful view of Eastbourne's Grand Parade. And 
Then it's just a leisurely stroll to the pier, where dancers will find all the dancing they'd wish for, with a special night for the old time bands. The Pier Theatre stages a resident summer show with well-known stars shining brightly. And the Winter Garden, the Devonshire Park Theatre, the Royal Hippodrome provides a full choice of drama, comedy, review and musical comedy for your entertainment. Not to mention the latest films in Eastbourne's six comfortable cinemas. You're not likely to see this chap popping up from the sea at Eastbourne, but you will see him, or it, couldn't possibly be a lady, at Altriston, one of the many places of interest around Eastbourne. Old smugglers' inns and picturesque cottages, and Altriston's 14th century Cathedral of the Downs, where you can see the marriage register dating from 1504 which is I don't know how many years before even Henry VIII embarked on his career of matrimonial bliss. And just a few minutes away across the river is Lullington, and what is reputed to be the smallest church in England. Just a couple of miles away from Lullington, you'll find the charming village of Wilmington, where typical of Eastbourne's surrounding Sussex countryside, time doesn't seem to matter much anymore. Pausing for a moment to wonder just what age in our history saw the birth of the long man. How did he get there? No one knows. There he stands, 230 feet tall, reminding us of the days lost in antiquity. But you hardly need travel at all to enjoy the country scene because Eastbourne has hundreds of acres of parks, so perfect for that easy stroll through shady lanes, so near and yet so far from the fun, the sun of the beach. Sooner or later you'll want to go shopping and you'll find the shopping centre just as convenient, just as attractive as everything else here at Eastbourne. You won't find yourself pestered with hawkers and street sellers either because they're just not allowed. But you'll still be able to buy everything you need from a Rolls Royce to a razor blade. Everything? Well, perhaps not a pipe then, and certainly not the Royal Marines. But that doesn't mean you can't enjoy them when it's carnival time in Eastbourne. Summers are long here, and you'll certainly need a long summer to sample all the delights of an Eastbourne holiday. Variety is the spice of life, they say, and it certainly makes a holiday go with a swing. Whatever mood you're in, Eastbourne provides an incomparable variety of life and colour, from morning till night, with the town twinkling with lights on the pier, the bandstand and season-long illuminations on the promenade. And that means it's time to end our visit to Eastbourne, Sun Trap of the South, the perfect choice for your summer holidays. <laughs>